Ultra Kill is a really, really good game, not least because of the incredible boss fights this game has to offer. All of them pose a challenge that is a perfect match to the player's skill level. From the Source Machine to the Ferryman to Gabriel, the fights are memorable and mostly enjoyable. Except for P2, that's just CIA grade torture. That being said, the game boasts its fair share of colossal bosses, you know, the ones that don't even fit on your screen fully. The first two acts feature the corpse of King Minas and the Leviathan, which are pretty alright in their own right. But the recent Violent Slayer introduces a new contender, the 1000 THR Earthmover. And let me tell you, this guy fucking nails it as a massive boss. Like with the corpse of King Minas in Lust and the Leviathan in Wrath, the Earthmover can be seen in the background of several layers before the actual boss fight, painting itself as a kind of magnum opus for the layer of violence, much like the previous colossi in their respective layers. The player is given an insanely intimidating image of the Earthmovers visible through the flashes of thunder in the distance. You know you're gonna fight this thing, it's just a matter of time. But they can't be much worse than the gutter tanks and swords and machines you've faced so far, can it? Both the previous bosses have somewhat of an exposition for them in their levels, be it a railway in Lust or the underwater section Wrath, having around 30 seconds of walking around to get you hyped up for the fight in some way. 7-4, like in Tenants to Heaven, is just... Well, hello there! Being greeted with a health bar and a piercing shriek right at the beginning of the level really catches you off guard. Another important thing about the Earth Mover, remember how I said Colossal Boss? Yeah, this guy lives up to it really well. The boss is absolutely massive, completely blowing out the previous two out in comparison. But looks aren't the only thing the Earth Mover does really great. The mechanics of this boss fight are by far what stood out to me the most. Even though we see a health bar, we can't outright damage it unlike the other bosses. And remember how I said the Earth Mover lacked a level of exposition? Yeah, well, the boss is the level itself. The Earth Mover's gargantuan size leaves V1 to scale its body, disabling security systems and enemies nestled on its back along its way to the central core. This is one of the only colossal bosses I've seen that uses its massive size not only as a way of intimidating the player or as a means of power scaling, but also to present itself as a playable set piece. But wouldn't that make it seem as though you're not really fighting the boss itself, you may ask? Well, in a way, you may be right, but I personally think otherwise. The setting constantly reminds you what you're dealing with, a goliath of a machine with the metal grates and pipes all over the place, as well as the earth mover being hit and trying to fight back against the other earth movers it's fighting using its massive lightning lance. With this combined with a pumping soundtrack and the persistent health bar, you never once forget who you're actually fighting against. And let me tell you, taking this thing down is a thrill. The Brain Room doesn't pose much more of a challenge than the previous gauntlet you've gone through, but destroying the Brain is far from the end yet. V1 has to race out of the chassis under a time limit before it self-destructs, leaving us with a climactic explosion as we finish the level. The Earth Mover's fight is complex on an emotional level as well. If we take into account that every machine that humanity has made was made to counter the last, V1, the robot we play as, is designed specifically to take down those walking skyscrapers. This means that the scream we hear at the beginning of the level isn't a war cry, it's a cry of pure terror, something we very rarely see in encounters such as boss fights. So much so in fact that it chooses to target you instead of the other earth movers currently dueling to the death. That's how much of a threat this goliath perceives you as, which is weirdly empowering. The Earth Mover is trying to destroy V1 not because of competition for more blood to sustain itself, but out of pure and utter fear for its existence. Its efforts are in the end proven futile, with V1 being the unstoppable force that it is. Since we got about one per act, the Earth Mover is most likely the last massive boss we'll get an ultra kill, but certainly not the least. Earth Mover being an unforgettable blend of spectacle, challenge and narrative and emotional depth, absolutely nails its appearance as a David vs Goliath encounter. Compared to colossal bosses from other action games, such as the Metal Gear Excelsior from Metal Gear Rising, the Earth Mover's boss fight just does a much better job at utilizing its size and gameplay potential, as it makes the boss much more dynamic to fight against instead of making it just another slightly bigger bullet sponge that you have to parry once in a while. I'm looking at you, Corpse of King Minas. All of this combined is what gives Ultra Kill's Earth Mover such an unforgettable boss fight. And something I'd like to see other colossal bosses in other games implement as well. This was Cold Brew, thank you for watching, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.
Peace.